Hi, my name is Mike Dorsey, co-founder and head of product at DataFox. We have a vision for changing how private company research and monitoring should work, and it's very different from how it's done today. We, our team comes from private equity at Goldman Sachs, as well as other investment banking, and we saw firsthand how arduous it is to crawl the web, search on Google, copy and paste data into spreadsheets, and worst of all, once the spreadsheet is built, it becomes stale and you have to update it infinitely. Because private company data is so sparsely distributed across a long tail of data sources, it's especially bad. Analyst opens 20 different tabs, is reading to the 19th page of Google results, hunting around for a little data point to fill into a cell. We knew there had to be a better way. Not surprisingly, Silicon Valley, not Wall Street, was the first to come to this better solution. Venture firms on Sand Hill Road and in Mountain View began using algorithms and hiring data science to mine the public web to identify data points that could help give them signals about the growth of specific companies in their portfolio and sectors that they cover. Hence, DataFox. It's an automated analyst. It's an analyst that automatically crawls the entire web, as well as pulling from our third-party data partners and creating our own data in order to give signals about the companies and sectors that we all cover. And the best of all, our analyst doesn't sleep, it doesn't eat, it doesn't complain about getting bonuses, any of that. So we crawl myriad data sources to collect millions of data points and organize, harmonize, and structure that data into spreadsheets so that our customers can see insights about the companies they follow. Because we know the companies and sectors they care about, we can give them real-time insights that give them a leg up on their competitors. One of the biggest problems in the, the field of sector analysis is that traditional sector taxonomies are broken. SIC codes don't work. Companies sometimes don't even know which bucket to categorize themselves. So what we've done is trained an algorithm to calculate the distance between every single company on a multi-dimensional plane. We then plot those distances on our force diagram plot, and we can tell you that Box isn't just a software publisher. They straddle three different sectors, file storage, consumer enterprise management, and enterprise content management. Not only that, we deliver predictive intelligence for our users. So in this example, I received an email telling me about this acquisition. Why? Because the, the system knows that I care about Square, and it knows that Intuit is related to Square. And so it knew to email me first thing in the morning so that I had a leg up on my competitors knowing that this deal had happened. And there's a lot more of exciting stuff where this comes from. Our founders hail from the top engineering programs, LinkedIn, Lockheed Martin, Cisco, Financial Engines, Box. We're really proud of what we've done in just 15 months with nine people. We've built a tool that definitely exceeds the stale annual reports produced by our legacy competitors by analysts in the Far East. And now I'd like to show you how the magic works. So we've built the world's best company search engine. So you can filter by any sector, keyword, funding amount, investor portfolio, et cetera. In this case, I'm interested in ride sharing. So I'll enter that, and now the algorithm is telling me, uh, do you actually want to look for carpool and other, other keywords? And yeah, actually I do. And I want to know private companies who are founded in the last few years. Now behind the scenes, our algorithms are automatically force ranking all the companies that you want to see based on this exact query. So let's say I want to dive deeper into Uber in particular. Here's a one pager that we, de that we develop on this company. We automatically produce 450,000 one pagers like this. We, we identify the team, the approximate headcount for the company, and even the sector that the company operates in. You can see these top 10 related companies that our algorithm says are similar to Uber. You may even notice that Instacart is in this list. Why? It's because it's an on-demand service. It's not necessarily a ride-sharing company, but our algorithm knows that you might be interested in it. So I actually want to dive into that sector more fully. So I'm going to create a list of those 10 companies, and I'm going to go check out the automated sector report that we build for that sector of companies. The algorithm is actually telling me that I might be interested in a couple more of these companies. So, and it also, you can see we have a competitive trajectory. So you can see that Uber is the legacy, is the, is the winner in this segment, but there's some other up-and-comers that are on the growth curve. Now I'm going to add a few related companies to this list to make sure I don't miss anything. 
And now I want to jump over to the data table. Now this is magical. It's like a spreadsheet on the web that's backed by a database, but it populates itself. So I want to make sure I get a specific company. So I'm going to put TaskRabbit in here. I want to make sure that they're part of my analysis. So I'm going to add TaskRabbit, and watch what happens. It automatically filled in the spreadsheet with up to 50 columns of data that we are automatically gathering from the web. And it force ranks them based on the DataFox quality score. So I can see who the winners are in this sector right now. There's a lot of other things that we can show you. There's a lot under the hood, like uh, trend lines over time comparing the different companies. But that concludes the demo for now. I really appreciate your time. I would like to invite you all to join the revolution by signing up at datafox.co. Whether you're an entrepreneurial founder or a private equity investor, we have subscription plans that can fit your budget. Thank you very much. All right. <laughs> Judges. Yeah, can you, uh, can you speak a little bit more about like, the uh, data sources? You said you are, like, get them from the public web. But um, is there any concept of kind of verified data where I can be uh, like sure that's like trusted? Yeah, that's a great question about uh, our data sources. So our data sources are, there are four main buckets. First is we crawl the open web. So we crawl the websites of the 450,000 companies. We also crawl Form D filings from the SEC as well as all the main news sources. And we audit all that data to identify interesting signals. Secondly, we work with our data partners. We have 12 of them with API relationships. In some cases, we send them data. In some cases, they send us data. So um, the third one is that we create our own data. So our scores, our sector taxonomies, and other published data that we can produce based on our algorithms. And then uh, you're, you asked about the auditing of the data. So we've actually built uh, algorithms that help us compare the bits of data across sources to identify problems. The, main, the fourth main source is consumer generated. So our users can actually alert us to incorrect data or can ask for us to build profiles that don't already exist. Okay, cool, thank you. I think it said Uber was headquartered in Oakland, so I can yeah. flag that as being wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. <laughs> so, so as you think about it, like, I can understand how it appeals to a lot of people, sort of a couple of us on this panel or people in the room who are investors or other things. Um, but can you talk about kind of what you're competing with and sort of like how big that market actually is? Yeah, absolutely. So there's the, we think about it in terms of the legacy players and the upstarts. The legacy players include Bloomberg, Thomson Reuters, S&P Capital IQ, billion dollar enterprises that primarily focus on the public markets. Right. There's about 20,000 public companies. We cover 450,000. one-off analysis uh, and uh, analysts and they can do it more quickly but we also tell them when things change so absolutely there's still a place for analysts but they'll be supercharged with our tool how about people who want to um, build businesses on top of data Fox or otherwise you know letting people run their own analysis not for maybe because they're the associate at the venture fund but because like you said, this market's going to be opening up. People are going to be looking at private company, you know, trading, invest, you know, accredited investors. How do you think about that big picture? Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of our data partners have asked to, to do reciprocal data shares, which is certainly something that we're open to. Also, a lot of broker dealers and, and service providers who love using the product have asked to license our data. One thing about APIs is they need to be backwards compatible and well thought out. So we've, uh, we've allowed a few firms to use our API on a trial basis. And that's something that we certainly plan to do in the future to empower people based on that. 
On the data analysis front, are you doing very sophisticated data analysis or is it just that nobody else is doing this at all in an automated fashion so you're winning because you're doing it? Or do you have like really strong algorithms and machine learning background on your team? Yes. Yes, so it's a, it's a little of both. We do, we have three people who are experts in statistics and machine learning. So we do things like the sector classifier, for example. It was a seven dimensional algorithm that takes into account all these different features and we built training sets for each of the 33 buckets and then we did, we ran about 100 different iterations on those algorithms to, uh, to dynamically adjust the weights. And so we have a matrix of algorithms that are like that. We did the same thing with our scoring algorithms. We also have similar uh, algorithms to help us parse the news. And all of those are iterative processes. So V1 was really naive, but we just keep iterating and iterating with our, with our team to get better at those. What's, the, oh, no, go. Well, what's the proprietary data that you end up having kind of in this? Because if it's just the same analysis anybody else could do from crawling it, or are you actually ending up with really something that's, that's truly unique that I can't get anywhere else? Yeah, absolutely. So at the beginning, 15 months ago, we had no proprietary data. Uh -huh. But as we've gone along, we've started building that. So we consider our company scores and our clustering, our sector clustering to be proprietary. And then the data that we pull from unstructured data sources and structuring it, yeah. it's not strictly proprietary, but it was inaccessible, essentially. Yeah. And so by making it accessible, in a way, we've created value on top of it. Yeah. It's, um, I mean, I've, uh, I just had a, like, a question to the team. Like you said, you had like three like, um, data scientists. Like, how, uh, how, how big is the team in general? We have nine people. We have nine people. Yeah, seven engineering and two on the business side. Okay. All right, any other questions? All right, that does it. That was DataFox. Thank you very much to Mark Thank Dorsey. You.